Hello, everyone, and welcome to session seven of the series Startup with John Houston, in which he has provided uh, what he believes are the seven tips to starting a healthy and thriving business. So, John, how are you doing today? Good. How about you, Ani? I'm doing great. I'm excited about this. Uh, it's hard to believe that we are already at the very last tip of this series. Uh, time has flown by, but yes. um, we're excited to, to share this tip. Um, in case you are just now joining us and you've missed all the other tips in the series, you can go to John Houston's YouTube page at John H. Houston, subscribe to his channel, and you can catch all the other episodes in the series. So um, these were not meant to be uh, chronological steps of, uh, you know, do this first, then do this. Um, so tip number seven is not the final step. It's just the final tip. But John, why don't you go ahead and share with all of us, what is the final tip, tip number seven? Yeah, here's, this is the one that's probably one of my least favorite, but also one of the most powerful. So I'm really excited about it. So tip, tip number seven is promote capital investment. Um, and here's what I mean by sometimes it's not my favorite. Man, I hate raising money. I really do. It's like one of my least favorite things to do. But there are times in our lives where where we do need to do that. Um, and so what I've learned is, is especially when we were a startup company, a lot of times, man, I really had to depend a lot on on my friends, my my family, especially my church family. I mean, they really uh, stepped up and helped us. Um as we began to start this journey that God had called us to. Yeah, fundraising for me um, just takes me back to like the old cheerleading days where we had to stand out and do car washes all day long. <laughs> so yeah, when I think of fundraising, it's not something I get particularly excited about, but like you said, we have to do it, especially during a startup. And so, um, John, I know that you did not raise all the money for, to start up this business by doing car washes. So uh, just talk to us a little bit about um, what were some of the things you had to do to think creatively outside the box um, to, to get the capital investment that you needed? Yeah, you know, um, here's what I can tell you. So for us, what we had to do was is we had to think outside the box because we had no money. I mean, Tracy and I were, you know, we were living paycheck to paycheck, but we were confident that the Lord had told us to start a home building business, to reach people of Christ and give the kingdom. So we really knew, OK, we've got to figure out how do we how do we do this? So we obviously prayed about it and God give us some direction. What we felt like the Lord laid on our heart to do was to I had a 403B, which if you're not familiar with that, it's like a 401k. Um, but for a nonprofit. So I had about $20,000 in that 403B account. And so what we did was at that time, we cashed it out. We really thought that was going to be enough. We got ready to start that first house and realized really we needed almost another, just over actually another $20,000. So we were like, oh man, how are we going to do this? Uh, and so I was actually in a prayer, uh, a small group at, at church that, that we can, you can also call a prayer group. And so I was sharing that. And I was like, hey, guys, will you pray with us on this? Well, after uh, that meeting was over, one of the guys there, his name was Christopher, um, actually came up to me and said, hey, you know, my wife and I, after after we had prayed together, my wife and I really laid you and your wife on our hearts. And we want to be the people that seed that fund into you. Um, and we'll give you that loan. And you just tell us how you can pay it back. And, uh, and I, I can honestly say today that was a miracle that God actually did. Uh, through them. And so that's actually how we got started. We actually um, took what God had given us, but then we also needed help. Um, and that friend of ours, brother in Christ, they actually stepped up and they were the ones that helped us do it. Oh, I love that story. And you know what I really love about that too, John, is that um, that's really been the, the emphasis of your company since the beginning. Uh, it used to be a tagline of John Houston Custom Homes that we build lifelong relationships. And, uh, and I love that that's even how the company started. It's uh, when we learn to in invest in relationships with people in our lives, um, they, they want to invest back into us. And so uh, I just, I love how the, the whole company even started with that as a model. Um, so uh, John, what other tips would you give uh, to someone who, who's in that capital fundraising uh, season right now, and it, it's getting challenging uh, and difficult, what what would you say to them? Yeah, I think what I would say is two things, is literally 
we, we've been in business now about 15 years. Um, and one of the hardest things for me about capital raising was as the company was growing and as we needed more capital, man, there were multiple times in this journey that I really felt like, hey, if this person, if this bank, if this uh, whoever would actually loan us that money, we would actually be able to go where we needed to go. A couple of things happened. One, there were times where, man, I was really, really trying to go raise this money and, and multiple times God just stopped it. And God was like, no, I don't want you going to somebody else to get the funds. I want you to trust me to bring them, but bring them the way I want to bring them. And man, I can tell you, those are hard, but I can tell you, we wouldn't be where we are today if we wouldn't have had to walk through that because I wouldn't I wouldn't be able to trust God the way that I do today because I saw him come through. And what he was teaching me during that time was I had to continue to press into him because Psalms 24, one says the earth and everything in it, including its people are God's. And so if God wants to provide it, he will provide it because he already has it. Um, but I had to, he was trying to teach me through that process was to press in on him, to trust him, to bring it his way and on his time. Um, the next tip that I would, I would give you is, is that if you go to family and friends and you actually ask them to participate, to invest in your company, really, you got to understand they're really investing in you. They're going to invest in you as a person. And so the approach that my wife and I have taken is anytime we've done that, we take that very seriously and we understand that, you know what, those investors are going to actually get paid back before I get paid. Um, because just like Christopher, the very first guy that ever loaned us that money like that, we made a commitment that we said, you know what, before I get paid, I'm paying you back. And that's what we did. Um, and so by doing that, it makes it tough. But if we really need the money to grow the business, um, then I think we can actually put a plan in place that says, you know what, we're going to make sure we take care of them first because you got to remember they're trusting you because really they're not in your day-to-day -day operations of your business. So it's really that they're investing in you as a person. Um, and so that's really how we've structured it. So if you need that capital investment, take it very seriously before you actually go try to, to uh, raise that and understand um, the weight and the pressure that comes along with that. I'm not saying don't do it, but I'm saying first trust God, and then take that responsibility serious because they are invested in you as a person. Yeah, man, you said so much great stuff there. And I, I just love the integrity too. I mean, I, as a business leader, uh, we have to lead with integrity. And Good. I love that. Um, and then just what a powerful perspective too. that sometimes when it's tough, uh, maybe that is, uh, there's a reason for that and that God yeah. wants us trust him and he wants to steer us and direct us to where we really need to go uh, to get that capital. So um, thanks for sharing your wisdom with us, John, in the series. It's been uh, a, a really fun series and hopefully all of our listeners have gained something from this. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, so you can follow John on Instagram or uh, on LinkedIn or on Facebook um, and just let us know what your thoughts were uh, after listening to this series. All right. We hope you guys have a blessed week and take care. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Ani.